Hi everyone, it's Mimi. Sorry for the long disclaimer before this video. You can watch my kitty as I ramble. If you want to skip it, I will put a timestamp. Before I get into my disclaimers, I want to give a huge thanks to Cactus Bill. She has a channel on YouTube and I have used a lot of her clips and videos and for this video, I used a lot of them. I also want to give a huge thanks to Erin from EKC People Suck. She also has a channel. She provided me with a lot of screenshots from Katie's old Twitter. I hesitated making this video because Vaughn is going to grow up someday and he's going to see everything that Katie has said about him on the internet. I feel bad having a video out there that contributes to that. My goal is to point out her hypocrisy, not only in how she says she doesn't talk about her son, but talks about him all the time, but also the hypocrisy in how she mom shames other moms all the time. There's nothing wrong if you want to share photos and videos and talk about your children. You're the parent, you have that right, but don't be a hypocrite about it and go on and on about how you protect your son's privacy when you talk about him all the time. I would love it if she watched this video and it was eye-opening and she actually does stop talking about her son, but I know that won't happen. This video is going to be a little bit different from my other ones. I'm not going to make it funny. I'm not going to include gifs or anything like that because that just didn't seem appropriate. I really want it to be Katie's own words. There were a couple things I couldn't bite my tongue about, but it's mostly going to be very without a crystal ball versus without a crystal ball style where it's a clip of Katie versus a clip of Katie contradicting herself. I do not think Katie has Munchausen's by proxy. I do not think Todd has Munchausen's by proxy. I think their son has legitimate health concerns, but I don't think they have that at all. I know people will disagree with me, but to me that is when you make your son sick because you want attention, and I don't think that's what's going on. That's just my opinion that they do not have Munchausen's by proxy. I'm not including that infamous clip of Todd when he was frustrated and came down the stairs when Katie was on a live yelling about how he was stuck in a room for 10 hours with Vaughn trying to get him to go to bed. Bed, but I do want to talk about it quickly. I don't think he was actually in the room for 10 hours. I think he was just frustrated with trying to get Vaughn to go to bed and he was exaggerating. I exaggerate all the time. I did that in a recent tutorial when I was putting pieces of string on my face and I said, oh, I had to do this about 800 times when really it was maybe like 30. What I don't understand about that clip is that Katie would not get off the live. You see that your husband is frustrated, your son is struggling to go to bed and she just sat there online. I don't know why you wouldn't put the phone down and help your husband. And finally, I am not going to turn on monetization for this video. I don't think it would feel right to make money off of her son, even though she makes money talking about other people's children. I don't want anybody to say that my goal in this was to make money off of her son because that's not my goal at all. That's all I have for disclaimers, so let's get into the video. I just want to be super clear. I have strict boundaries when it comes to my child. Probably TMI, but he actually had a poop that looked like normal poop. I breastfed my, my son until he was almost four. I'm not gonna answer your questions if you ask me how he is. How is he doing since his migraine? He's okay. He gets migraines a lot. I'm not gonna tell you how he's doing in school. My son is in school until the 23rd. Oh my goodness. My son got his first dose of the vaccine, but even once he's fully vaccinated, we're not sending him to school. I did just buy a bunch of clothes for my son to go back to school. It's like the last week before my son goes back to school. I'm not going to tell you what grade he's in. My son is done with first grade. My son is seven, seven and a half. I have an eight-year-old. I have a nine-year-old. He's almost 10 years old. I'm not going to tell you how he's doing in school. He's about two years behind, but he will never catch up because he's almost seven. He'll probably live with us his whole life. Yeah. 
at school. He doesn't go to lunch because it's so loud in the cafeteria and he has a hard time with noise. It was a tough day today because we had spring break last week and so we had to go back to school today. Getting him back into a routine after being off for 10 days is not easy. We are constantly trying to get our kids accommodated in class. We have to deal with IEPs and arguments with teachers to make sure that services are met and educators not trying like basically giving us the bottom of the barrel education because they just don't have the bandwidth or the understanding or the care i'm not going to tell you what he's learning in school my son had his assessment for reading today and he did or yeah he did really well i guess or what he played with today he had a good day and he wanted to play a lot so today it was lots of battles with godzilla he had the whole floor set up as like hot wheels city and he was in such a good mood today You playing in your sensor bin? This is one more vehicle. Yeah. Or do you want to from me while playing in here, okay? Okay. You want to watch you from there? Yeah. You have to know what these guys are doing. If you could find a tractor for me. Well, I don't know where it is. Is that your crash pad over here? Do you want to show me how you can jump? Okay, baby, go watch it from this. Okay. No, I'm not going to tell you what he did for breakfast. We wake up together, come downstairs. He has his little food by mouth, help him with breakfast. And we do morning together and we have our breakfast and he gets his tube fed. This is gravity feeding. And he's tummy. Goes a little bit slower, I mean, quite a bit slower than the puppy on. Sean is very happy right now. He's getting his food. He's playing with his Play-Doh. He'll have some of his juice. He can eat Cheetos. He can eat foods that dissolve really easily. Just because he can chew on things that are easy to dissolve in his mouth for pleasure. He eats like a couple foods for pleasure. What he eats for by mouth is not for nutrition. It's just to like eat. Everything else is through his tube. Good job, buddy. More, more no. cheese? Doesn't mean that he can eat enough to sustain himself. I don't really talk about him. One person literally told me, you talk too much about your son. I don't teach my son that he has to obey and if he doesn't obey, there's consequences. I protect his privacy. This was actually on his birthday. We took him to the Mall of America. We live in the Minneapolis uh, area. He's not on my platform. Do you have to hide everyone? Yeah. Yep. My son is not a part of this channel. Can you say bye to everyone? Bye everyone. Look. Look up at me. Say thank you for following me. Thanks for following me. I keep him private for a reason. Thank you for being my friend. Thank you for being my friend. Just because I have a child doesn't mean that he's a part of my business. He's not. I've worried about my son catching this deadly virus because there are so many people out there that are simply not thinking about all of those people who are medically fragile. My son is medically fragile. We don't go out, but I haven't like gotten in my car since last week because we try to keep my son safe. Last week when I went and got my brows done and my hair, all of us were vaccinated and we all wore masks. He's not a part of my social media. My business has always been, without a crystal ball, reporting on varieties of different topics, none of which included my son.
My son, he needs a straw for several different reasons. And before you tell me to use one of the alternatives, we've tried everyone, none of them work. They don't work because of my son's unique issues and the unique issues we have as caregivers. Because my son is unable to hold a cup and take the motor skills to put the cup to his mouth, and then he has oral dysphagia, which means he can't use his tongue properly, which means he can't swallow properly, which means he's a choking hazard. The one way that we've been able to make sure that he doesn't choke is by teaching him painstakingly how to drink from a straw. It took my son four years of therapy to learn how to drink from a straw. It's become increasingly more difficult for me to go out with my son. Before we go anywhere now, we have to pack his own cup and a straw because we never know if any place that we go will offer straws. So we only got straws for him because we asked and they were black and unpositionable, which do not work for children like mine. Positionable is important for individuals that are in the hospital. My son is in the hospital a lot. What they don't tell you about babies that are born premature, they have a really hard time keeping their body temperature. They wear these little hats. Look at how tiny these are. He fit in these, his tiny little diapers. This is a newborn. This was really big on him. Look at this tiny little jacket he wore. I don't talk about him. I know I talk about my son. If you ask me, I'm not going to. If you ask me, He's upset right now. He's going to bed. He's fine. He has autism. My son, he has autism. As a mom of a child that is on the spectrum. My son is autistic. We talk about zones of regulation because he has autism. I have a son that has autism. She has to break this all down because he has autism. He's considered level one autistic. If you have a child with autism, at least with my child. One of his issues with autism is struggling with noise. <sighs> I actually was cleaning out my son's ears. Oh. You ever do that with your kids? He was growing potatoes in his ears. He hates it too because of his autism. So he's like, like, no, no. If you have a child with autism, I'll tell you a secret. My son has regiments. He does have autism. My son, obviously having autism, has meltdowns. What are we advocating when we're showing a video of our child with autism having a meltdown? What's wrong? Really, the only thing that's off limits is stuff to do with my son. I try not to answer too many questions about him. He has had three brain surgeries, open heart surgery, two gastro surgeries. He has a permanent feeding tube, asthma. He has neuropathic pain. He has hydrocephalus. He has Chiari malformation. He has a paralyzed stomach. We have a lot that we deal with. And I don't share about it publicly. My son was born at 35 weeks. He actually tried to come at like 28 weeks. We had a very rocky pregnancy. I don't talk about it publicly. It's not uncommon in critical care for someone to get a blood transfusion. My son had three and he did not have a blood issue. My son had no loss of blood either. You don't have to have loss of blood in order to get a blood transfusion. He was learning how to ride a trike, which was really hard for him. He has a lot of disabilities, you guys. I've shared bits and pieces over the years, but nothing significant. My son has a low IQ. My son has a below normal IQ. You can be curious about our lives. It's a whole nother thing when you go onto your YouTube channel and monetize my child's life. How many monetized videos has Katie made about the Duggar kids, the Bates kids, Plath's kids, Goslin kids, Roloff kids? You all say that you're not bullying him, but you are. My little crotch goblin is down downstairs watching his iPad. I don't understand in what world calling a child a demon is even appropriate. I will not explain his dad diagnosis. No. He does have autism. He's got a million other things. My son has more than autism. He has panhypopituitarism. That's his primary diagnosis. No pituitary glands. The hardest part is adrenal insufficiency. He has way more than autism. He was born with a congenital neurological condition, which affects like his entire body. He has panhypopituitarism, born without a pituitary gland, dysautonomia, so they can't control their body temperature. Having dysautonomia, which means that your body, a lot of kids, their central nervous systems don't work. When your brain doesn't properly develop, it can cause a lot of issues. And his specifically is in the central nervous system. He was also born with something called Chiari malformation and hydrocephalus. Yep, my son is totally cute and that's all anyone needs to know. When we first got his diagnosis, they told us that developmental delays were normal. He's got level, I don't even know, level one, I think.
autism. What his diagnosis is, is at this point irrelevant. He has so many diagnoses, it wouldn't it'd be like too much to even talk about right now. He has a... It all, come, it all stems from his brain. He has multiple brain abnormalities. I also have this little boy that has a lot of needs. He was premature. He wasn't crying. He was a little bit blue. <laughs> um, why do you want everyone to know what's wrong with your kid? My son has a very fragile immune system. Like, that's weird. My son, we think he has um, what's called spina, spina bifida occulta, which means that the spinal column didn't form correctly. I backed away from talking about him a couple years ago. I was actually with my kiddo. We had to go to our annual cardiology appointments. We are three years post-op from open heart surgery. I didn't want him to have his digital footprint known. He doesn't make any hormones. He's on a lot of medication. Growth hormone deficiency isn't super hard. You just have to give a shot of growth hormone. Without it, he would not grow. He would actually have dwarfism. And we're not sure how big he's going to get because he's really behind on the curve because he had heart disease and he didn't grow for a year. Endocrine doctor was very hopeful that his growth will not be stunted because of his lack of growth due to his heart condition. I wanted him to be able to like have a little bit more like anonymity. I have a child that doesn't have a pituitary gland. He also has no thyroid, a hypothyroidism. You'll rarely see me talking about him. Got all of like my son's medications ready. You'll rarely see him on this channel just because I don't want people to like know too much about him. Hi everyone, no. Okay. Oh, what? Okay, but do you know that? I can't. Okay. You don't want. I don't know if you guys are like familiar with brain scans. We've seen lots just because of our son. It's easy to see brain damage on a scan. He deserves his privacy. My son actually can get kind of like angry really fast, but I don't get like that at all. Like I've always been very even keeled. Bitch, please. I don't get very like emotional about really anything. Link in description box to three videos on Katie Joy yelling at her subscribers. I have a child that has pan hypopituitary. So it bothers me greatly that there are women that are doing this to their children intentionally because I would give anything for my son not to have to deal with this. If my son didn't take medicine daily, he wouldn't live. He's on medication three times a day to keep him alive. He's been on the medication since he's been born. Well, since he's been three months old and we just changed insurance companies. It's an extremely expensive medication. It costs five fifty-five thousand. dollars it costs over $60,000 a year, $5,500 a month. They don't want to pay it. Like, dude, I could buy probably two, like I could buy a Bentley right now if I wanted to. $5,500 for a 30 day supply it's not being approved and that's been very frustrating natasha denona it's not one of those drugs that's like marked up because they can mark it up whatever they use to make it it's hard to make i recently got this palette bebo palette i got a brand new palette natasha denona's my dream palette and i'm obsessed and that's what i'm wearing today along with this face palette and the lip gloss and the lip pencil are from the same collection. I don't want to shame anybody for what they spend on makeup because holy moly, I spend way more on makeup than the average person does. I just want to point out she is going online complaining about how expensive her son's medication is while at the same time buying some of the most expensive makeup out there. And I know I pick on her a lot, but her makeup does look really good here. I thought she looked really pretty in this clip. It's literally none of your business. All I was trying to say is we have a medication we're trying to get approved. It's none of your business what it's for. The medic that they take for to save your life is called Solucortef. Here it is. I only see one in there. I think this is expired. If they don't get that shot, they, they can die. Yeah, they're all expired. They're all expired. <laughs> I was looking forward to it and then 
This is kind of just how our life is. He has dysautonomia, so he has to have the room at a certain temperature. He's had four brain surgeries. I think they use with my son before he has had brain surgery. Why do you want attention for your kid being sick? That's weird. The disease that he was diagnosed with, one in 500,000 children are diagnosed with a year. One in 500,000 babies is born like this. My son's disease is one in 500,000. Two in a million. talking about a kid that has type 1 diabetes. I'm talking about a kid that has 12 doctors, nursing, 12 hours a day, cabinet full of medicine, the cap of our pantry is full of his medical devices. This room right here is my son's. His entire closet is full of medical supplies. Nobody gives a shit about anyone that has a disability. Families like mine are isolated. We have no friends. We have nobody that gives two craps about us. Everyone walks out on us. Our kids are obnoxious, don't behave right, or have too much stuff going on. We have too many requests or we were too high maintenance or we worry too much about our kids. Kids with disabilities, and I'm going to be frank, are really only convenient when you're selling a story. I know special needs proms are so gross. From an article that she wrote for the mighty she said the hardest part for me as the parent of a child with delays is the daily realization that life will be different for my child each and every evaluation i am reminded that he may never live independently go to college get married or have a family i know he has a long time to grow and i know anything is possible however i am also realistic that his processing delays may make it next to impossible for him to properly manage his medical diseases I don't want to be the mom that's accused of using his situation for attention because it's not my story to tell. He told us he was the sickest child in the entire ICU. His illness is not for clout. The highest risk for not making it. It's not for sympathy. I... I always think about how I got through my husband, my son almost passing away. And so if I can get through the darkest moment of my life by my child surviving, he believed my son was going to die. Literally having a doctor <laughs> sit you down and say, your child is the sickest child on this floor. Adrenal insufficiency is really scary. Not a lot of people have it and not a lot of people have the kind that he has. We had a GoFundMe when my son was in the hospital when he was a baby. And then another one when he was like five or three or four before he had heart surgery. If the GoFundMe was for Vaughn's medical expenses and you paid your mortgage with it, would that be considered fraud? Asking for a friend. I have a son that's gone through a lot. He's been on life support. He was literally on life support and almost died. My son, when he was on life support, received a blood transfusion. I did most of the caregiving for my son until he was seven. My husband was working outside of the home until May of last year, and I was the primary caregiver. So I was pulling double duty, doing my blog on YouTube, taking him to school, taking him to therapy, taking him everywhere. In other words, she was a working mother. I don't bring up my son. It's his business, and it's his life, and it's his privacy. We're doing his bathroom and turning it into, like, all accessible. It'll be wheelchair accessible, which he doesn't necessarily need right now, but it also will be accessible for caregivers and everything to help him grab bars because he needs those. He has, he's a fall. Risk. His low muscle tone. Wiggle it over and then they can get into the tub. And that's like what we really wanted for when he gets older because he needs so much help. Grooming and autism, it's not like something they really can they think about. So they need help with it. My son was having a hard time falling asleep. My husband was having, he was just exhausted. My son starts melting down about something re related to his 
sleep being thrown off, created this big screaming fit where my son was screaming, yelling, crying. He doesn't sleep very much. And I don't know how much sleep kids are supposed to get, but then he has all these medical conditions. My son has ADHD. He never sleeps. He has, he's also autistic. So he literally never sleeps. He is on more trazodone than I am and he still doesn't sleep. So when you say he doesn't sleep, that means that he goes for days without sleep? No. For instance, last night we were out of his medicine and he fell asleep at 8 30, 9 o'clock and he was up at 4. I take trazodone as well and it's my happy no. She's complaining about kids getting up at six in the morning. Who stays up until three when they have children, for Christ's sake? My kid is up at five every damn day. I don't really talk about my son. His blood sugar had been like 25, 30, 25. Finally, by like morning, he had like a normal blood sugar. My son is naturally hypo hypoglycemic, so we have to monitor his blood sugars constantly. He'll have blood sugar issues like his whole life. They figured out he had had an adrenal crisis. My son has adrenal insufficiency and he has had, I think, five crashes in his life. His first adrenal crash nearly killed him. They were concerned that he wasn't born with a pituitary gland. My son doesn't have a pituitary gland. So it's a little tiny master gland that's in your body. He doesn't have one. Our son has adrenal insufficiency. He doesn't make any hormones at all. We have to replace all of them. We have hydrocephalus, he has a shunt heart surgery, he has low muscle tone, feeding tube. We had to do a tap, an ICP monitor. So that's three brain surgeries for the shunt. He has had PRD compression. wasn't actually a migraine, but we never know because he has complex health. Monday night was brutal. Puking everywhere, headaches, so much pain. He was in so much pain. Finally was able to get him settled down and sleeping. Then it just got progressively worse and worse. Tuesday night, I got him to not puke as much, but then we woke up this morning and it was like, he still couldn't open his eyes. But we were like, okay, something is really wrong here. We literally need to go to the doctor. They did a lot of tests today. We did, um, two x-rays because the first x-ray wasn't like clear so they did another x-ray they did a ct scan they did some medications which didn't work his neurology and neurosurgeons don't have their own er so we have to go to another hospital's er for them and then they all have to like coordinate on the phone and it just takes like forever the shunt is like this tiny little bump that sits on the top of your head it helps your cerebral spinal fluid like sift through your body if you get too high of pressure in your brain it can actually cause really bad problems and it can lead to brain damage and death. We have no idea how this happened, but somehow his shunt program, which sits on the top of his head by a magnet, it changed settings. When it goes in between, it doesn't actually land on the setting. The valve is wide open. Fluid is just flowing out. So his brain was like really dehydrated. <laughs> They had to come in and change the setting and put it at the right setting and it'll take a while for all of that fluid to actually replenish. Typically microwaves wouldn't cause them to actually reset. We think it could be from his iPad, but we don't know. We have no idea how this happened. We have no idea how this happened. One of the articles Katie wrote for The Mighty, she talked about how it was easier to get Vaughn to eat if they put a phone in front of him. After they reprogrammed his shunt and he got some medication, he was like actually like looking at his iPad and interested in his iPad. We have no idea how this happened. We think it could be from his iPad. After they reprogrammed his shunt and he got some medication, he was like actually like looking at his iPad. I have a child that has a feeding tube. He gets formula through the feeding tube. He does have a feeding tube. He's got a couple conditions that cause him to not be able to eat. Ugh, my hair is such a mess right now, you guys. Gastroparesis. <clears throat> when your stomach is partially paralyzed, it just doesn't empty as fast. And so when it doesn't empty as fast, then it causes pain bloating. So it's down the stomach, constipation. He has trouble swallowing, so he has something called oral dysphagia due to severe oral motor processing disabilities. Due to his neurological conditions, he can't chew. He doesn't take very much by mouth. He can eat some things, but not a lot. I'll just read a couple snippets from this article that she wrote. When you eat with your child with sensory processing disorder, if you place anything on his plate that appears slimy, has a weird texture, or is simply unpleasant to his liking, he will not touch it and will not feed himself. 
In Vaughn's little mind, which is actually very large, I'm starting to believe all food that is of an undesirable texture has to look like worms. There have been moments of sheer panic on his face and real tears when he sees food on his fingers. That diabolical milk better not drip on his shirt or a scream of sheer panic may exit those tiny vocal cords. The worms control our lives as meals take more than an hour. Despite the months of work, we are in no better position than we were six months ago when we started feeding therapy. Vaughn will still not touch those dang worms and he still cries when many foods even touch his tiny fingers. Each day we are still feeding Vaughn nearly every single bite of food. Nearly every meal will take us more than an hour as he not only won't touch the food, but many foods he simply won't chew or swallow. It makes my own skin crawl thinking about having to sit another hour at the table coercing him to eat. Can you imagine when Vaughn reads this? To know that your own mother said it made her skin crawl to sit at a table with you while you ate. He's terrified of certain foods, and if you present the food in a way he finds offensive, you will be lucky if he will ever eat the food again. The amount of tears from both of us during meals is enough to probably fill a small pond in the field behind my home. We work diligently in therapy and in educating myself on oral aversion. I'm learning this is not something Vaughn will simply overcome. We will have to teach and hopefully encourage him about food, being fun and not full of slimy words trying to inhabit his adorable belly. We hope he will eventually want to feed himself the food and that we won't be spending more than three hours a day on simply feeding him. Our goal is simple. We want Vaughn to enjoy food. We want him not to fear his birthday cake. We want him to view food positively and not like slithering worms trying to harm him. If we have to spend years doing this, I will work on it daily so he can be free of his fear of food. Reflux is better. His ability to tolerate the feeds is better. He's not breathing as heavy. Our biggest issue was his inability to actually like breathe and play. You put this around the actual G-tube. This actually collects the discharge. Having the legume as a primary source of protein is not good for him because he gets really gassy. The sphincter muscles don't open so then he um, can't burp on his own and that causes pain so we have to vent his stomach. I think about my son and like how he might feel if like his entire medical history was like public. My son has verifiable, verifiably things in his body that are missing, his pituitary gland. He has had to have open heart surgery. He has high pressure in his brain. The very first part of the fetus, when it's like an embryo or whatever it's called, the neural tube is the very first part. So when a neural tube doesn't form correctly, it's called a neural tube defect. Some cases of it are low folate, but I didn't have low folate. So it wasn't anything that like I could control. It's not genetic either. <laughs> like it's not caused by prenatals. It's, it's, it's literally just the tube didn't develop correctly. His bedroom is like a literal medicine closet or a hospital. I'll just show you something very quickly. That's his nurse's stuff. They're here six days a week, okay? They have all their kids there, okay? Those are his feeding tube things. Look, all these are medical supplies. That's what our life looks like. Syringes, extensions. Not to mention he has all these vitals that we have to do. That's just downstairs closet. Upstairs closet, we've got tons of supplies. So I wanted to show you guys something. This is our medical closet. This is what life is like when you have a child with a lot of needs. These are for his nebulizer. These are his feeding tubes. There's his feeding pump, which he uses when he's sick. And it looks like we have a ton of syringes, but that's because we go through so many syringes a day. Parents that put their whole lives out there like that with their kids, I don't co-sign that. I haven't been on vacation in six years, you guys, since my son was born sick. I need vacation. I'm having a wardrobe malfunction. This is what happens when you drop your child who's medically fragile off at kindergarten. What's my best excuse for being late? Um, I have a child with autism. Get rid of some debt and take care of things that we haven't been able to take care of because our son has been through such a hellish life. One of the criticisms that you'll see of me online is that Katie doesn't have any friends. Katie used to have a lot of friends. Katie used to have a very, very, very busy social life. But when I gave birth to my son and he was born with illnesses, I don't have a social life. It's not feasible. His health has never dictated us being able to have a social life. If I don't have friends, that's why. It's not because I don't want to have friends. I would love to have friends. Managing his care is a lot. You have to be in one of those marriages where you're constantly talking about how much sexy time you're having or how much explosive, like, physicalness you're having. It just gets to a point so many years down the line where that's just not realistic. With us, with our son, like, it's just not realistic. When I stopped believing in God was because my child was so fucking sick and everyone kept telling me, well, God wouldn't give you more than you can handle. And to those people, I want to tell you, fuck you.
because nobody I know would ever walk in this my life and tell anyone that you can handle this. I don't think I'm going to go to the trial. There's lots of people that want to meet me. Bitch, please. I'd have to leave my husband up here with my son. I was with my family all day Saturday, all day Sunday, all day yesterday. My son is downstairs doing the stickers, playing with his toys. My husband is reading a book and playing with his, playing with Vaughn. So I'm like, I'm gonna go upstairs and hide for a minute. I've never spent more than one night away from my son in the nine years that I've been his mom. I'm so attached to my little boy. The best part of my day or week, I don't even have a best part of the day. After my son goes to bed, maybe. Even if I'm working, he can always come into my office and be like, mommy, what are you doing? How are you? What's up? Mom, why do you always interrupt me? Because all that you need to Okay, okay, that's fine, goodbye. Dog emergency again. Some of the other kids that don't go to lunch with a special ed group. Imagine doing a job and not one of your peers stands up for you. Not even a single one of his. I don't know if she's gonna keep this on her channel. And I think, oh my God, hold on. Sorry. Um, I just want to thank her for like allowing other creators to use this because I don't know if she's going to keep this up on her channel. And I definitely want to be able to. Ah! Vaughn is not happy right now. Bang on the uh, garage door and say, get out here. <laughs> she's like, bam, bam, bam. <laughs> get out of here. I'll shower him. Okay. I got stuff I need to do. Unbelievable. He's in jail now. Who is? Don, Don Wells. Don Wells. Not for the baby. This difficult time. Thank you, Abigail. It kind of seemed like to me like you were um, not really listening to reason, but you just wanted to stick up for him. And I thought maybe maybe he sent you here or something, maybe to, just to do that. But I, I sincerely apologize. Please accept my apology. I did not mean to come at you that way. <laughs> Vaughn wants to go back. Vaughn. Oh, okay. Vaughn, I don't... You guys, I'm gonna hate this. What? Vaughn, I don't want you to cry. It's on social media, which is fine. Hey, buddy, I'm... Don't. Come in the door. Sorry, my little son is trying to come in the door. To a different public school. To. I'm sorry, you guys. My son has been having a rough day. This has been my day, you guys. We try to minimize... bedtime my son was just yelling i don't know why he never goes to sleep for my husband what time is it why is he still awake what time is it it's nine o'clock okay he just is gonna go to bed now he gets like at his limit he yells he gets tired he gets very tired okay i spent a whole so today, obviously, I had a lot of time to sit underneath the blanket. Okay, you guys learned a secret about me. I'm obsessed with my child. What are some of your favorite one-on-one -on -one activities to do with your son? Um, I love to cuddle with him. He is really snuggly and he is a mama's boy when it comes to like wanting comfort. So when he's not feeling good, we love to cuddle um, and snuggle. <laughs> um, I love to laugh with him. Um, I don't, you know, we don't really... And he's very attached to me. If he's had enough of me downstairs, like during the weekends, he'll be like, mommy, can you go upstairs and do a stream? <laughs> mommy, maybe you could just go upstairs and do a stream. He is like in this like anti-mommy phase. So he always tells me to go away. Mom, just leave. My son would not sing happy birthday to me. He wouldn't tell me happy birthday. He wouldn't hug me. He loves his daddy, but like mommy's his comfort. My son favors my husband. My son had me like shove in this office all day long. He's in this phase right now where he's just like really not into me. He's like all about daddy, all about daddy. And then he's like, mommy, you're always working. And then he's like, mommy, go away. My son is so affectionate. He always wants hugs. Yours has. Ah! Mom, go upstairs with your dad. 
they have to get to a point in where they have hold on one second you cannot have him screaming like that always wants kisses well i'm i don't go find your dad he craves emotional connection the Mommy's streaming, okay? <laughs> Things. <laughs> Today he gave me a hug and he said, you're my, what did he say? You're the, he said, mommy, you're my favorite person in the whole world. Oh, the joys of having a child that is six and a half with autism that can only do his routines and just want his daddy for everything and has completely lost his interest in mommy. I don't even talk about my son, really. My son, I can think of a couple gamers that he follows up. He is humongous fans of. He loves the gaming beaver. I wake up with him. He sleeps with me at night. Whoa. Okay. You guys, I'm sorry. I was on mom duty, which meant I had to clean. Um, whenever I'm like with my son, I'm like, oh, we need to clean. Kids can lie all the time. My kid can lie, like, kids lie. Today, my husband had to remind me that the holiday was coming up and I had to do shopping. Every year, that's how it is. I don't think about it. Vaughn is getting, I don't know, ask my husband. Todd, what's Vaughn getting? Do I know more about strangers' children than my own? No. Happy, do you think that I'd know less about my son than you? Block, 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 block. My son walks into my room and he's like, Mommy, can you help me download this app? And I was like, sure. My husband looks over and my, my son is pressing to buy a button and he has his little finger on his touchpad. We had set up his new iPad with a touchpad finger and I was not assuming that my son would be able to put it together that if it asks for him to put his finger on it, that he would know that that's how to pay. There were 87 transactions for his games. Sometimes my husband will be watching videos of mine when my son is sitting there with his iPad. I wouldn't want to be talking about inappropriate adult stuff. Trigger warning in some of the next clips, Katie talks in graphic detail about CSA. Please skip to the timestamp listed if you need to. Digitally penetrating. What do you think that sounds like? You put your fingers up the genitals of a five-year-old girl. You rape a child by sticking your fingers inside their genitals if it would have happened in a child that size there would be physical evidence of a male body part going into a child's body part there is physical evidence there was no physical evidence because it didn't happen he was like i'm totally into kids i'm watching child pornography i'm getting off on it he'll like listen to my streams when like i'm on sometimes just because a guy has a fucking dick they are superior to women because they have a penis and testosterone i mean the only difference between a man and a woman is a penis and a vagina so if a man has a penis and a woman has a vagina apparently the penis is more powerful than the vagina and having a vagina doesn't doesn't make you inferior to a man that has a penis josh duggar penetrated a child that was five years old with his fingers he didn't just grope a girl on her breasts they don't want you to know that he digitally penetrated with his fingers a five-year-old child my son is just happy i'm not talking about josh duggar for five minutes i don't show my son online either what's the triceratops i told you the triceratops hold him up and show the people what he is Calls him with triceratops. If my son was out for weeks at a time and I had no idea where he was, I would not be in my house ordering takeout, doing nothing. My son is just like losing. I don't even know where he is. All I can hear him is screaming. The other thing they always say is, you said that your son could be a murderer. That's actually not what I said. Thankfully for the internet, nothing goes away. Do you believe that your son could be be manipulated into murdering somebody? Yes. You do? Yes. And you're bullying a child that has a lower IQ and has autism and developmental delays. He's a vulnerable child that will need help for the rest of his life. He has amazing doctors. And I'm pretty sure half that my son's, son's doctors have um, high-functioning autism. He's an amazing nurses. 
We've had some not great nurses in our house. Like she didn't want to be in a basement. One day she didn't want to be in a room. Another day she didn't want to be in his room because she said that she just can't sit in a room all day and be with my son. But that's literally what she's hired to do. Our private insurance pays for my son's nurses. My son has a waiver through the state that helps to pay for a lot of the co-pays that we would have to pay for. It helps with his like supplemental insurance. It helps cover nursing. It pays me like 40 hours a week to be his, one, of, uh, one of the many caregivers in his life. Our nurses manage all of his medication. There's no truth that we have our nurses paid for by Medicaid. It helps cover nursing. That's not true at all. an amazing team that cares about him. My son's genetic, that first genetics doctor, she was so awful. I'm pretty sure she had autism. No one from the genetics department called us for results for over a year. So they set us up with this chick named Dr. We go into the doctor's appointment. She has this attitude to begin with, and she's basically like, First of all, I don't believe that your son can have multiple medical conditions. I don't believe that any child can have multiple genetic conditions. And I just think that your son has a malformed brain, and all of his problems are because his brain didn't form correctly. And actually, if you really think about it, he's brilliant given the way his brain looks. My God. You are adding insult to injury by implying that we're forcing him to do things in his life just because we're lazy. He always talks about how exhausting it is to actually have to be with his own children. I was physically drained. I was emotionally drained. It's more important that he gets well and we spend time with him. It's just really exhausting. I was um, sitting at home all day with my son because we still don't have nurses. Today was weird because first off, uh, I had to be a mom and we had to go to the doctor. And that was fun. Uh, mommy. We have not had any nurses for like the last three days. Everything's been kind of delayed because my husband, obviously, when we don't have any respite for Vaughn, we have to manage the animals, my son, the dogs. AKA, they had to be parents and pet owners. Your regular job as a mom is to feed and clothe and make sure that your children are safe. A caregiver of a mom becomes a nurse. They have to learn complex medical health conditions and learn how to give medication, learn how to give feeding tubes, learn about DMEs or medical supply companies. They have to navigate the healthcare system and a lot of time on hold with insurance. It's a lot different than just being a mom. What child wants to grow up and become an adult and look back on their lives and know that their mother thought that they were so hard, that they put such a burden on their family, that because of their disability, mom's life sucked? My son's illness and my son's developmental issues put me at my lowest point mentally. Think of what that would do to the child's self-esteem. She cries more tears here than about her kid. It's hard to watch my channel just fall apart. It's been like the biggest thing and the most important thing to me. It's like watching people no longer watch and click on my videos when I'm working so hard. What's your biggest fear in life? That I won't ever be able to do the splits. I'm not even kidding. Tell me what mother and father would go online when their, hus when their son is literally in a hospital. I don't take selfies while my son is in the hospital. My God, you guys are insane. I heard Molly say that she would take care of him. My son would never want to be around you. He hates when people swear. I say, Fuck that. Blowing shit. 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 Fucking bullshit. Stupid ass. Assholes. Ass pat. Kiss someone's ass. Fucking dickhead. Messy as fuck. Fucking fucker. Fucking fuck off. Fucking lawsuit that's none of your fucking business. What the fuck is that? He does not like when people yell or curse. Who the fuck are you? I'll call you whatever the fuck I want to call you. Are you fucking kidding me? Yep.
He does not like when people are mean to other people. I talk shit about a lot of people, Amy. Talkie, you're gone. If he heard you talking the way that you talk to people. Shut the fuck up, Leslie. They're so stupid. They're idiots. He would scream at you. She's a condescending little bitch. He would tell you that you're not a nice person. I am like, whew, calling some bitches out right now. Does anyone else get hot when that happens? And if he heard your voice, he would be like, uh-uh. Shut the fuck up. Nope. Suzanne is fucking psychotic. The same people that are coming for my child and saying that he's not ill or I'm making it worse are probably homophobic, racist, misogynistic, sexist, transphobic. They probably hate most people. I stopped talking about this kind of stuff out of respect for him. So I'm going to move on. I only have one kid for a reason. God, I wanted to be child free. I had only one kid because I was like, I can't handle having more than one. I didn't want to have kids. Our decision to have a child was a compromise because my husband wanted to be a father. And I was like, yeah, I can do it. It'll be fine. Imagine you're a kid and your parents are just like, nah. I don't need another kid. I don't actually like kids enough to want more than one. I want to be a mother that makes my son proud. He's like, these are the pumpkins and that's the family. That's daddy and the kids. And I was like, where's the mommy? He goes, mommy's over here and she's going through something. I don't want to add trauma to my son's life. Just don't want you guys to think that Mother's Day for every mother is happy. It's like a dark day in my life. <laughs> I kind of get depressed on Mother's Day and I get depressed on his birthday. I don't want to be a mother that would embarrass my son. It's just kind of a reminder of his life is so fucked up. What is she gonna do when Sophia like grows up and realizes her mom is toxic AF and she leaves and ditches her? Like what's Farrah gonna do then?